everybody so I thought I would just come on and show you I have seen many many people do um, share simply cook uh, recipes and boxes with um, through social media through people I know personally um, and I've never tried it but one of my friends had recently signed up to it and had an um, option for people to get a free box so I thought I'd give it a try with a free box and then see how we get on so it is a subscription service if you sign up for a free box um, you do have to subscribe, which means you order kind of your next box. Now, the interesting thing is you can have the boxes delivered as often as you like. So you can have the weekly, two weekly, monthly. Um, and from what I can tell from other people's comments, um, again, not from the site itself, but from people talking about it, it is very easy to skip a delivery, skip a subscription, um, put your kind of account on hold for a few months if you don't want any boxes for a while. Um, so when you do a free box, and I will drop a link down below where you could also try a box yourself if you're in the UK um, for free. Um, it took about 10 days for the box to come through in the post. I think that's just that delivery times are just a bit slow at the moment because of everything going on. Um, I don't think it normally takes that long. Um, and then when you sign up for a subscription, it's $9.99 for a delivery. So for each box that you get, it's $9.99. So that's kind of aligned with the costs of some of the other kind of monthly boxes that you would get. So the idea behind Simply Cook is that they send you all of the kind of seasonings and spices you would need, along with the recipes and the list of the other ingredients for four meals in each box. And they have a choice it's well over 50 different options. It's There's a lot of kind of Asian food, Indian food, Thai, um, some South American stuff, some um, traditional American flavors like barbecue flavors, um, and some really interesting recipes. And I, I don't know if you're like me, but um, I will just open this cupboard and show you. We all have a spice cupboard or a spice rack that looks a little bit like that. And the stuff at the front is the stuff that you use quite regularly. And at the back, you tend to have stuff that you bought for a recipe, used half a teaspoon of it, and you never use it again, and you throw it away when it goes out of date. So the idea behind Simply Put Cook is that you don't have to do that until you've decided that you like a flavour or you like a, um, a combination of flavours, um, because they send you everything you need. So the box does come in this nice little flattish box. It goes through most letter boxes in the UK, so it, um, you don't have to be in to receive the delivery. And then when you open it up, you'll see on the inside there, they do also have an app, um, which gives you the shopping lists from the boxes that you've had or the, the recipes that you've had. If you're out on, at the store and you think, you know what, I'd like to make something from my Simply Cook box tonight. However, I don't know what I need. You can open up the app and see that. Um, it also allows you to manage your account on the app. So if you want to skip a delivery or something, you can do that. Um, you get, as with all of these things, a little package of things they think you might be interested in. And then you get your recipe cards for the um, meals that you've chosen. You also, in your, I think this is because this is my first box, it's a little welcome, kind of describes the service a little bit more to you. And then you get these four little packs. Um, so you can see the things I chose for my first box were jambalaya, barbecue tandoori platter, bok and bap, and churrasco chicken. Um, some of those, like jambalaya and bok and bap, I love. Barbecue tandoori, haven't really thought about that. Um, but I like tandoori, so that should be nice. And churrasco, I've never tried, which is a bit like peri-peri. Um, so that would likely go down well in this house because we like peri-peri. Um, so it comes in, each one has its own little box of um, seasonings. Um, you get a recipe card to go with it. And you can see the ideal serving size is four servings. So if you're on your own, you could make a couple of nights meals, perhaps something to put in the freezer if you if it's a freezer friendly recipe. Um, and if you're a family, it should be enough to feed the family. You might want to bulk it out a bit with a bit more meat or a bit more like side dishes or something like that. Um, and so it has a, a picture of what you're trying to achieve with your recipe. And then on the back, you've got your full recipe directions. You've got your little list of everything that you need. And then on the side, which is quite interesting, it's got a little tear off and it just says, take me shopping. So if you were just shopping for the stuff to prepare these four meals, you could just tear off each of these, take those with you to the store and you've got a list of everything that you're going to need. So I quite like the layout of this. This is really clear and easy to read. It's got it in nice steps of everything that you need to do. It also has some optional ingredients if you want to add a bit something different to the recipe. 
It also often recommends side dishes and things to have with, although often the side dish is incorporated into the recipe itself. For the barbecue tandoori chicken, it has sweet potato wedges built in, and then it suggests you serve it with a side salad. Um, so the little boxes, now I should have opened one of these before I started recording, um, just so that I could show you what it looks like inside. I don't know if I can get into it. Let me just stop the video and I'll open this one up and come back. Okay, so there you are, that's what it looks like inside. Now this is the jambalaya one, and the little pots are each clearly labelled with what it is. So this is the Cajun seasoning, and it's just a little pot of measured out whatever you need for your dish. Um, you can see that they all have quite good dates on them, so you don't have to use things straight away when you get it, you could save them. This one is garlic paste. Now we always have garlic in the house, but I know not everybody does, um, so that includes that. And for the... Um, the third item for the jambalaya is jambalaya stock. So this is a little bit like a stock pot, a little portion of stock that we'll make up and add in probably with the rice cooking. So each of them has three pots of flavour to go with your meal. I'll just show you what the others have in them so you can actually see from the recipe cards. So the barbecue tandoori chicken, the pots in there are sweet potato seasoning, smoked chilli blend and tandoori paste. The bokkenbap. I don't even know if I say that right, I've just always called it bokkenbap. Um, has garlic paste again, um, with a couple of um, Thai flavours, so goshuang, that was, reminds me of gokwang, it's not gokwang in a pot, it's goshuang. Um, and then the other one is donjang, donjang, I don't know, if we've got Asian viewers on our channel they might correct me there, but um, anyway, two of the Thai flavourings or seasonings that you need to make that delicious noodle dish with the egg on the top. And then the churrasco chicken has in it um, piri piri glaze, spicy wedge blend to do with your potato wedges and saffron seasoning. Again, saffron's a really expensive um, spice to buy. Um, if you've ever bought it, you'll know you get a tiny little sachet of it in a big jar and it costs about six pounds or something. So this just gives you a little bit of it that enough to use for the dish and it comes in the value of the pack. So what I thought I would do is as we cook each of these meals, I'll kind of show you the steps involved with them and put them all together into one video. Um, they'll obviously be part of our normal weeks of meals of the week video as well um, on the weeks that we make them. Um, I have got my next order due to be delivered in about three weeks. So um, that's I've chosen four completely different meals for that. Um, and then we'll decide from there whether we want to continue and how often we want to have it. We, as you know, we, we have a few meals that we like to appear regularly on our meal plan, but we do vary it up quite a lot. So I wouldn't want to be into, you know, having the same meals every month. Um, but I know some people do enjoy doing that, just having a rotation of about four weeks worth of meals. And this could certainly fit in with something like that. So we'll let you know how we get on with the four recipes. We'll also try to get a reaction from Caleb and Tony for each of them. Um, to see what we think of them um, and hopefully that will help you to decide if you've been thinking about trying it but are not sure hopefully this will give you a bit of a of an insight so as I say I'll drop a code down below which will be um, which will be give you a chance to also get a free box of four um, if you sign up for a subscription so um, yeah we're looking forward to trying these we're actually going to have the first one of these tonight so we'll um, we'll record the first little video clip tonight and then we'll see how we get on from there okay so we're ready to go with our first simply cook um, meal so this is the jambalaya it says of the two main types of jambalaya in Louisiana we've gone for the more rustic Cajun one pot which doesn't have tomatoes like the Creole version from New Orleans both styles reflect the melting pot that is Louisiana cuisine, showing influence from Spain, France and Africa. They say when Spanish colonials tried to make paella without saffron, which they couldn't source in the USA, they ended up creating jambalaya. The chorizo in this dish brings Latin attitude while the herbs bring French elegance. So in addition to my three little pots, which are Cajun seasoning, garlic paste and jambalaya stock, I need chicken thigh fillets, which I'm going to chop into small pieces. We need some diced chorizo, I'm going to use both packs of this, this was new in Aldi this week um, and it just saves all the chopping of chorizo. You need basmati rice, I'm going to use about 200 grams, perhaps a little bit more for us three. A little bit of olive oil, an onion and two peppers, they can be any two, red and yellow, red and green, orange and green, whatever you've got, just two peppers and the onion chopped up um, finely. 
you've got a couple of sticks of celery which you want to chop up and then on the recipe card it says you can include prawns in this. Now Tony doesn't eat prawns, Caleb and I like prawns so I've got some cooked ones rather than cooking it in with the chicken um, and I will just sprinkle those on the top for mine and Caleb's um, meal. So I'm going to get on with all the chopping and then um, once I've done that I'll come back and show you how it starts to come together. Okay so we're ready to get cooking. So in here I've got the chopped up chicken thighs and I've coated that in the, gar um, the Cajun seasoning that came in the kit. So it's just sprinkled all over. If you were using raw prawns or raw shrimp um, in this too, you would also sprinkle a little bit of it over the prawns. But because we're just going to put some prawns on top for Caleb and I, we're not worrying about that. So this is the diced up chicken. Now again, the recipe calls for three to four chicken breast, breast, chicken thigh fillets. And I've used a pack of six. So it's a little more chicken, but that's the beauty of these kits. You can just add a bit more of the protein or the starch or the veggies and have it big enough to cater for your family and there was definitely enough seasoning there to, to coat it all. Um, I didn't need to chop the chorizo although you would do that if you were obviously starting with a big piece of chorizo. I've weighed out um, about 220 grams of basmati rice again a little bit more than the recipe calls for but I can add some more water if I need to and then here I've got what in Cajun cooking is called the holy trinity so in French cooking, you have mirepoix, which is um, onion, celery, and carrot. Um, and remember that Cajun um, food has a lot of influence from French, but they have this, which is called the Holy Trinity, and it is the base for gumbo, etouffee, jambalaya, a lot of the traditional um, Cajun dishes, um, and it's onions, peppers, and celery. And I've got a kettle boiling, ready for the boiling water to go in for the stock and the rice. So I'm just going to heat up a tablespoon of oil in the pan and then get the chicken cooking and then I'll come back. So there is our chicken all cooked. You want to cook it all the way through because it only has a couple more minutes back in the pan towards the end of the process. So um, you want to make sure it's well and truly cooked. I'm going to take that out of the pan now. If you were again using raw prawns and you would coated them in some of the Cajun seasoning, you would then just cook those for two to three minutes in the pan just to cook them through and remove those from the pan as well. But once I take the chicken out, I'm going to add the chorizo, let that start to break down for just a couple of minutes, then I'm going to start building the flavours with the vegetables before adding rice and stock um, rice and stock to get the jambalaya itself actually going. So you, one thing I didn't mention, you want to use a large pan that's got a lid, so you could either use a deep like a stock pot or I've got this large skillet frying pan that has a lid with it so that's ideal because obviously if it's cooking the rice you want to have a lid on. So I'm going to get the chicken out, get the chorizo in and then I'll come back as I start to add the vegetables. Okay so the chorizo has had a couple of minutes in there, it's just starting to brown around the edges, it's released its oil which is very paprika -y. Um So now the next step I want to do is add the garlic paste which is the second pot that came in the kit. So this is kind of like garlic syrup almost, it's strange. But that's what we're adding next, along with, um, from my vegetables, my holy trinity, the celery. And the onion. Peppers don't need quite as long, so they'll go in next. Now I'm going to let that all continue to cook together for another couple of minutes before I add the peppers in. So we've now got... Chorizo, garlic, onion and, and celery all cooking together away in there um, and so just a couple of minutes to let those flavours, let the flavours come out and let the onion and celery just start to soften a little bit and then we'll get the, um, the peppers in before finally adding the rice and the stock to let that cook away. Okay, so they've had a couple of minutes and um, the onion's just starting to soften. Now I'm going to add the two peppers in. Now remember, this could be any two colour of peppers. Traditional would be red and green. I just happen to have yellow and green. Just chop them up into pieces. You want to give it a good stir to get it all coated in that kind of garlicky, paprika-y seasoning with a mixture of the garlic puree and the, um, and the oil that releases out of the chorizo. Um, and I'm just going to let that now cook for about three minutes before finally adding the last flavour pot, which is a stock pot, um, some boiling water and the rice. And then we'll pop a lid on it, let it cook away for about 15 minutes, just like you would normally for rice, before putting the chicken back through it. And we should be ready to eat. So um, 
when I add when I add the rice and the stock, I'll come back and show you how that combines in. Um, and then um, we're 15 minutes away from dinner. Okay, so that has had two or three minutes. Everything's up and up. The chorizo is well and truly cooked in there. So next I'm adding this jambalaya stock, which is the third and final little pot that was in our kit. So this is a bit like a stock pot, but it's a little bit looser mixture than that. So I'm just going to grab, just bear with me a moment, a little spoon. I can get some of that out of there, make sure we're getting all the flavour in. So that is that. And in the little pot. So this is like a stock base, but it's um, more of a, a paste, or even thinner than that, um, rather than the jellied kind of stock pots that you normally get at the grocery store. And it's Cajun stock, so I imagine it's got a little bit of spice in that as well. Um, so I'm going to stir that through. Then I'm going to add my basmati rice. So I've got just over 200 grams in here. The recipe called for 180. 200 to 210 is a bit more what I would normally use for us for a meal. And I know this has got lots of veggies in it um, and the chicken's going back in. So that kind of beefs up the rice a little bit. Or chicken's up the rice a little bit. Um, but um, I've just gone a little bit more than the recipe suggested so that there is plenty of this for us. So once you've got the rice combined, you want to add, again, the recipe calls for 500 mils of boiling water. I've got 600 because I've got more rice, but I will also keep an eye on it while it's cooking and make sure if I need to add a little bit more boiling water, I will while it's cooking away. So I'm now going to combine that, just stir through, make sure none of the rice is stuck together in there, bring it up to the boil, cover the pan, and let it simmer for about 15 minutes, about the time it would normally take to cook some basmati rice, which is about 15 minutes. So um, that will just cook away and take care of itself. Most of that liquid should then get absorbed. You can see that stock has really um, flavoured that boiling water that I put in. So definitely looks like there's a lot of flavour in there. Um, looks like it might be slightly tomatoey based, perhaps. Um, flavour wise but probably definitely another kick of heat. We were just debating whether this might be too spicy for Caleb. I have got a couple things in the freezer I can quickly get him if, if it is too spicy. He's starting to enjoy a bit of spiced food now but obviously he's got his limits so when you first start eating spicy food you don't want to go um, red hot um, to start with. So I'm going to let that come to a boil. I'll pop the lid on once it does and cook it for 15 minutes then I'll come back at the end and just show you. We're just going to put the, chick the chicken pieces back through once it's all cooked. Um, and then, as I said, Caleb and I will have ours served with some um, prawns on the top. So that is almost it for the jambalaya. So it's certainly been easy. Um, I would say start to finish, probably about 30 minutes once you've got your prep done and everything chopped up. So not too bad, about 10 minutes to cook the chicken. Then we've had about another 10 minutes on the kind of vegetables and chorizo and then we've got 15 minutes for the to cook through for the rice so yeah about 30 minutes start to finish which is i think reasonable um a lot a lot of ingredients were needed apart from the kit and some meat and vegetables and rice so yeah looks like this one might be a hit but what we will do is once we've eaten it i'll come back and give you all of our opinions about how it was um so again if you're thinking about ordering from Simply Cook. I just thought this might be a way for you to um, have a look at some of the recipes they send you, how they're prepared, how easy or not they are. Um, it definitely does appear to be easy. And then what we think of them. So you've seen the sorts of foods we eat, you know the sorts of foods we like, um, and we'll... Okay, and there is our finished jambalaya. So um, timing was just right, the amount of liquid I put in was just right, I didn't need to add any more, the rice is just nice and perfectly cooked. You can see the big chunks of chicken in there, there's little pieces of chorizo, the peppers, the celery and the onion. Um, now I have had a little taste of it and it is quite spicy, I will say that. Now we, Tony and I both like spicy food, he more than me even will just be, eat about anything spicy. Um, and I can, um, I enjoy quite a bit of spicy food. Um, but I think it might just be a little bit too spicy for Caleb, so I have got him something else just heating up in the microwave. Uh, he'll probably want to try a little bit of this but I think he'll probably have um, 
the other dish instead. Um, so this is the Cajun jambalaya from our first Simply Cook box and we'll come back after we've eaten and just give you a bit of a review of how we found it. Okay, so we've just come in from enjoying our jambalaya. <laughs> it's bending down so it's the same height as me. Um, and just thought we'd come back and give you a bit of a review. So I really enjoyed it. Um, it wasn't as spicy as I thought it was going to be. And in fact, I think Caleb would have coped reasonably well with it. So if you have children that quite like a little bit of spice, then it would have been fine for them. Tony's the spicy food and uh, obviously American food expert in this family. So what were your thoughts? Not very spicy. Not very spicy. For me, no. not very no. spicy. It was, but it, it was delicious. It was really, really tasty. It's got a lot of flavour in it. Certainly those three flavour pots added to it. Um, the chorizo obviously adds a bit of spice, but it wasn't as spicy as it seemed like it would be. And I think if I'd have used normal Cajun seasoning um, and perhaps some hot sauce or something in it, it would have been spicier. So um, don't be afraid of the spice, I would say, in that jambalaya because it's not that bad. Um, but yeah, for our first meal from Simply Cook, we quite enjoyed it. And now we're looking forward to whichever one we try next. So thank you. And we'll see you for the next. Um, I think the next one I'm doing is the tandoori barbecue chicken um, later this week. So we'll come back and show you that one as we prepare it. Bye. Hi everybody, so we're moving on to meal two from our Simply Cook box and tonight we're going to try the barbecue tandoori chicken um, and it has the ingredients in it to do the chicken and sweet potato wedges to go with it. So you can see the blurb on this, originally from Punjab in India, tandoori chicken gets its name from the hot clay oven in which it's traditionally cooked, a tandoor. Now a popular dish across the world, it's served as a starter or a main and can often form the base of curries and has inspired many other <clears throat> derivatives like chicken tikka. Since being served to the first Prime Minister of India, <clears throat> it has become a standard offering at official banquets. So that's what we're aiming for tonight. Um, and you can see the ingredients that we need, some chicken breast, the three little pots of flavour from the Simply Cook box, which for this one are sweet potato seasoning, smoked chilli blend and tandoori paste, some sweet potatoes, some vegetable oil, a lemon, some natural yoghurt, I just happen to have a pot of Greek yoghurt, you could use just normal natural yoghurt if you've got that instead, a couple of tomatoes, some onions and then I will also have a bag of salad. To, to have with it at the end of the day. So the first thing I'm going to do, it's only lunchtime at the moment, I'm going to combine the yogurt with, or some yogurt, probably about 100 grams of that yogurt, with the tandoori paste and the smoked chili blend, and then pop that into this big tub and put the chicken breasts in so they can marinate for the afternoon before we go to cook it. So I'll just combine that all together, come back and show you what that looks like, um, and then we'll come back again once we actually start preparing dinner. So I have combined that all together and no that's not chocolate ice cream, <laughs> that is the tandoori paste. So <clears throat> the smoked chilli blend, this one, that was a, a bit like a chilli powder. <clears throat> so it's obviously got some smoked paprika in it along with the normal chilli spices of some cumin and probably some um, cayenne um, and then smoked paprika. And then the tandoori paste, which was the other little pot I used, there we go. Um, that was like the paste that you get in a jar of <clears throat> curry paste if you're making um, from home from, from a jar. So that was very similar to that. So I have combined both of those with the yogurt. I'm now going to pop the chicken breasts in here. I'm probably going to cut them in half because they are quite large chicken breasts. When I come to cook them, I want them to cook quite quickly. So I will chop them in half, I think, because that way I can ensure I get some of the flavours from this across the, the chicken breasts. I'm going to cut them in half, pop them in the mixture, make sure they're well coated, pop that back in the fridge, and then I'll be back um, once we start preparing the rest of the meal. So it is now approaching dinner time and I've got everything ready. I've got the oven heating up to 180 fan. I was going to, I wouldn't have put it on fan, I'd have put it on 200 regular. Um, but as you know, I was planning to either grill or barbecue the chicken, but the weather is pants again. We've had thunderstorms again. It looks like it's about to start raining. 
So I'm just going to put the chicken in with the or in the oven at the same time as the sweet potatoes and there I've put it therefore I've put it on the fan setting to have a better circulation for cooking. They do have this as an option on the recipe card to cook it in the oven if you want to. So the sweet potatoes I've cut into chips and wedgie kind of slices. Um, they've got a coating, I put them in a bowl, coated them with about a tablespoon of vegetable oil and then the sweet potato seasoning pot from our pack. This is quite interesting, it sort of has a, the spice mix has a bit of a curry smell to it, but it also has a bit of a smoky smell to it, so I think it's just that combination of spicy and smoky to get that smoky barbecue flavour. Be interesting to see how that tastes. And then there's my chicken pieces already. So the one thing I forgot to mention, in with the yogurt and the two pots of seasoning from the pack, I also put the juice of half a lemon. Um, so they've been sitting in that all afternoon. I'm going to now put the sweet potatoes in the oven for about 10 minutes to get them started, then give that pan a good shake and turn them around a bit, and then put the chicken in um, to cook as well for about another 20 to 25 minutes. I wouldn't normally crowd this many sweet potatoes onto a pan. If I'd just been cooking the sweet potatoes by themselves in the oven, I would have put two pans of this. Um, sometimes it can make them go a bit soggy rather than crispy. I'm going to cross my fingers and hope for the best with this. I actually don't mind if it's sweet potatoes. Sometimes when we do them in the actor fryer, they go a bit soggy. Um, I don't actually mind as long as they're cooked and, and taste good. Um, but to make way for the chicken, I only wanted to put two pans in the oven. So I'm going to get these all in the oven. I'm going to make up a bowl of salad to serve with it. I'm going to cook a few plain chips. Caleb's not a fan of sweet potatoes yet. Loved them when he was a baby, but he says he doesn't like them and parents will know what I mean when I say he says he doesn't like them now. Um, so I've got a few normal chips ready to go, sliced potatoes ready to go in the active fryer for his um, and then I will come back and show you it when it's all cooked. Okay so there is our finished tandoori chicken, it actually smells really good. Um, so tandoori barbecue chicken, there's our sweet potato little fries and wedges they are slightly crispy but a little bit soft but I'm okay with that I don't mind I really don't mind I, I don't know what the trick is to get them mm, they're really tasty I don't know what the trick is to getting sweet potatoes really crispy like you get them if you go out to eat the active fryer they go mushy in the oven if I put like two fries on a, on a sheet they will go crispy but if I put kind of enough for a family they go mushy and I guess it's because they steam more than they um, crisp up when they're close together. But I, I genuinely don't mind because I just love sweet potatoes so it doesn't matter to me. But um, I've just tasted one of those and they are delicious. And we've got some salad to go with it. So we're going to tuck in and enjoy this. And then as with the last one, we'll come back and give you our verdict on the um, barbecue tandoori chicken. Hi everybody, so we've just finished our tandoori barbecue chicken. We thought we'd give you our verdict on it. So Caleb, what did you think of the chicken? I think it was good. And what would you give it out of ten? Uh, eight. And what did you like about it? The flavours. The flavours, they were pretty good weren't they? Mm -hmm. Daddy? It was delicious. The flavour wasn't too overpowering. Yeah, so um, Indian flavours are not really common in the States, so there's some parts of the States, usually the two coasts, where you can get Indian food, but the rest of the US is quite hard to find, so it's not a flavour profile that they eat a lot of. So Tony certainly doesn't choose, wouldn't choose to have Indian takeaway or anything like that. He doesn't mind the curries that I make at home, but it's not his favourite flavour by a long shot. So, but this was more kind of barbie smoky, wasn't it? So I thought it was delicious. Um, the sweet potatoes were great. Whenever I have sweet potatoes, it reminds me how much I like them and then I don't have them again for ages. But the seasoning on the sweet potatoes was delicious. It was just the right blend. Um, th they weren't spicy at all and the tandoori on the chicken wasn't spicy. It just had a nice level of flavour on it, um, which obviously when you marinate it in the yoghurt, you get that kind of um, mellows it out a bit. But yeah, all in all, that's definitely one I would order again um, and make again. Really enjoyed it. Um, Daddy, out of 10? Mm, I'd give it a 9. Yeah, yeah, I think about a 9 for me too. So definitely one that I would make again. So two meals down from our first Simply Cook box and two good results so far. So looking forward to trying the other two over the next week or so.